Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV and today we're fishing the stick float. We're fishing on the Warwickshire Avon today on a stretch between Bidford on Avon and Stratford. And as you can see, I'm fishing the runoff from this weir. We've had two or three weeks of really hot weather and the river's really quite low. So my main thinking behind selecting this peg today is the fact that I've got this wonderful oxygenated water and I've got a good flow of water to go out as well with this favorite method of mine, the stick float. To start with, I just thought I'd just fish with a, a light stick float with double maggot on the hook and just try and understand about the swim. So understand the flow, the depth, and try and work out perhaps where I can catch best. I've never actually fished this stretch before, so it's very much an exploratory session for me and it's just a, a quick session in the evening after work. So I think weir pools like this are always quite mysterious. You're never really sure what you're gonna be targeting. And um, just by having a good look at the swim before I started fishing, I can see that the, the water in front of me from the weir down is actually quite shallow. It's probably only about two or three foot deep there's lots of weed in there. So I've sort of decided to fish out in front of me and slightly downstream. And then as the swim moves down towards this lock cutting, the swim starts to get a bit deeper. So it's a really interesting peg. I've got two or three different options of where to fish in terms of trotting my float down the swim. And also, by fishing in different areas of the swim. So we'll be able to, to try and work out where the best position is to, to catch the fish today. Well, I've already had a couple of small fish and I just bumped a little fish then. I'm gonna persevere just fishing with a double maggot and just by loose feeding regular and often with hemp and casters. And as you can see, I'm, I'm feeding the hempen casters just slightly downstream of me so I can fish my stick float through where I'm feeding. And that bait's going to be settling in different spots down the swim as we go. So I'll cast and exploit different parts of the swim as the session progresses. A good trick that I've learnt when I'm fishing on rivers in the summer is if I'm getting plagued with little fish, like this little tiny bleak, I'll start introducing some different baits like pellets and small cubes of meat. And that again gives me a, a great option of a change bait. If I simply can't get through the small fish on maggots and casters, then I'll persevere as the session goes on and just keep trying some bigger baits. On some days that's the, that's the best kind of policy. I might not catch loads of bigger fish but it just gives me an option of trying and perhaps catching a, a few better bonus fish to mix in with the silver fish that we, we know are here that's for sure. I'm getting a, a bite pretty much every cast already.
a better fish. I've just tried a cube of meat and I don't think it's massive but it's given me a good scrap and I've got to be careful because of the weed and lilies down the side so Managed to pull it out of a big lump of weed. Fine, this is where having a, a longer rod like this 15 foot is so useful for really piling the pressure on and getting the fish up quickly. Well, it's not massive, but they're getting bigger. That one's perhaps 14 ounces to a pound. An absolutely beautiful river chub. When you look at a swim like this, you can see it's almost tailor-made for fishing a stick float. The main flows right under my rod tip in front of me, and then the swim just continues down on a line where it joins up with the cutting from the lock. So I'm not really having to cast my stick float out at all. I'm just pretty much running it off the end of my rod, which means that I can control the float really easily and a top and bo bottom float like a stick float means that you can achieve a, a really top presentation over perhaps fishing a, a waggler or a different type of float. So as I mentioned the, the stick float presentation is perfect because I can hold the float back gently control it down through my swim and I'm doing that in a couple of different ways I can slow the float right down by just stopping the line coming off the spool and then letting it go and smoothly trying to control the float what I don't want to do is have the line out of control which would start to pull the float unnaturally out of position so that's why I'm controlling the float by keeping the bail arm open and letting the line come off at a set speed. I'm just trying a piece of meat just to see if I can attract a bit of a, a bonus fish. Then another way that you'll see people presenting the stick float is by peeling the line off the spool. So it's achieving the same kind of presentation. I can stop and hold back the float if I want to kick the bait up off the bottom and I can let it go through. But I can also sort of encourage the float through the swim at the exact speed that I want it to go through. I've just gone up to a slightly bigger hook to fish the bunches of uh, maggots or meat on. And that's a size 13 B711. So it's a bit of a, a gaff really for what I'm used to fishing on the Avon, but because there's so many small fish in the swim, they're absolutely obliterating anything that's not a decent size. A good tip I always like to do with most of my micro barb talks is actually flatten the barb completely. So I've just got a, a bit of a bump. And with these B711s, I actually like to, to bend them with these style pincers so that the points just slightly bending in. And I find a bump less fish. So you can see how I've sort of reshaped the shank of the hook. Okay, let's take a look at the bait that we're using today. So the main feed that I'm introducing is hemp and casters. And I've, I've got a few tears in there as well, which on its day can be devastating for roach. So what I'm doing is I'm covering my options. I've got two or three different feeds there, hemp, caster and tear, to, to give me different options. You'll notice that I've got my neat casters in a separate container so that I can 
change the percentage of castor. So by adding more castors, obviously, make it a richer mix of castors, or by reducing the castors, making it more hemp. That's something I'll do throughout the session, depending on how the fish are responding. You'll also notice from these live castor maggots that these castors are so fresh. And that gives me such confidence when I'm fishing on a river like this. I've also got four pints of maggots that I'd switch to if I was stop catching on the hemp and castor. And obviously I've got a great change bait with red or white maggot. And I've also got some four mil halibut pellets that I'm introducing. I'm not introducing it in a big amount, but it's just something that I'm feeding to maybe attract some bigger fish like chub and barbel. And same story about the meat. I've got some very roughly chopped up meat here all sorts of different sizes that I'm introducing very, very sparingly into the swim. And as I've already proven, I've had a, a couple of better chub on little cubes of meat, something like that size. So this is how I'm hooking the, the meat. I'm just simply pushing the hook through, twisting it and then pulling it back in. I'm not putting any bait stop or anything behind it. And um, part of my thinking is I can I haven't got to cast it far, I'm only just lowering the, the rig into the water. And when I get to the bottom of my swim, I can strike the meat off. So I'm actually sort of uh, gradually introducing some luncheon meat right where my hook bait is landing. So I think that's a, a great tip. Well, I'm glad I made the effort to come out. It's an absolutely beautiful evening. I really can't think of anywhere better I'd rather be. There's an awful lot of small fish like these bleak in the river today, but we're getting bites and I'm absolutely loving the stick float. A great bait on the river for chub and barbel is a bunch of maggots. And I'm gonna go for four red maggots. And I'm doing something which might seem strange in that I'm not hooking them in the conventional way through the fat end. I'm actually hooking them all through the tail. And if I can show you, those maggots are still, they're extremely fresh. They're still wriggling, they haven't burst, I've just lightly nicked them in the tail. And the big advantage for me is, I don't have a big, massive bait around the point. If I'd have hooked them all through the head, that point would have been obscured. And I think that's a far better way of hooking a bunch of maggots. This is my 15 foot CR10, and it's the number two version. And it's absolutely perfect for fishing today. I think. My go-to rod, really, when I'm stick float fishing is 15 foot. It gives me so much control. It makes the job so much easier in terms of improving presentation. And as I mentioned when I was playing one of the chub earlier, it also gives me greater control on the fish when I'm playing them, particularly when I've got lots of snags like this in the water. One thing that you will see is the action on the rod is it's got a, a very nice soft tip which is perfect for when we're hooking and playing the smaller fish that we're catching today. And then it progressively bends into some real power into the middle section and butt. So it's a rod that's extremely versatile and one that can be used when float fishing on rivers like this for small fish moving up to much bigger fish like chub and barbel. So I've coupled the 15 footer up with our 4,000 cadence reel. This is a, a CS8. It's very, very powerful, very, very smooth. And I like using a 4,000 reel when I'm fishing with a, a longer rod like a 15 footer. Just helps to balance the rod and also gives me even more power when I'm playing bigger fish like Chub today. So the, the lighter stick I've set up, I've selected this 13 foot CR10 rod. 
In this case, it's a number three. So that's the most powerful 13 foot rod that we do in the range. And I wanted to have a rod where I knew that if I hooked a better bonus fish, like a, a bigger chub or maybe even a barbel, this rod's gonna have the power to be able to cope with the fish in this fast and weedy water. Same story with the 15 though. It's not a poker. It's got a nice soft tip look that will cushion the strike and cushion smaller fish. And then you've got where the power really kicks in. So you've got an extremely versatile rod and one that's an absolute joy to use when you stick float fishing like this on rivers. Okay, let's have a look at the rig and floats that we're using. So on my lighter rig on the 13 foot rod, I've got this five number four Dave Harrell and it's a dome top float with a wire stem. So this weir pool swim is very turbulent in terms of the flow and you'll find a wire stem is affected less by the turbulence of the water with it being so thin. And also the weight in the bottom means that you've got some control. So I do like fishing wire stem stick floats like this when I'm fishing on fast shallow swims. Another big advantage of the dome top is that I can see it in amongst all the swirls and the white foam from the weir. So that's another advantage of that. Now I'm really using this rig to fish in the top half of the swim when the, where the water's a bit shallower. It's only about three to four foot deep. And my rig has a shotting pattern which is a typical stick float rig with what's called a shirt button style shot pattern. So I like to have quite a long hook length between my first dropper shot. I mean that one's probably getting on for a foot. I'll vary that depending on how the fish are feeding and how it's responding. But that's working well today. And I've got two number 10s and then number eight spaced out above that. And as I go further away from the hook, I've got two number eights together. Now, I always like to fish with number eights as the largest size for my droppers when I'm float fishing, because it means I can be very versatile. I can adjust the shotting pattern accordingly, however the fish are responding. And rather than maybe being lazy and just putting two or three number one shot on, it also achieves much better presentation. It gives you that really nice slow fall but it's a fall that you can read on the float. And the, the reason I double up with number eights is obviously number six lead shots banned in the UK. So I'd rather use number eights and double them up. So that's the, the lighter rig. Let's have a look at a contrasting rig, which I've set up on the 15 footer. So in this case, what I've actually done is I've bulked up all my number eights because we're getting pestered by these small silver fish and I want to get my bait down to where the bigger fish are perhaps feeding. So in this case I've got a good bulk of number eights and then I've actually got two number eights as droppers. So it's a much more positive rig and I'm fishing this one a bit further down the swim where the swim shelves off to about five or six foot deep and I'm using a, a larger wire stem float. It's also a, a Dave Harrell and it's got the dome top but this is a eight number four. So that extra weight's helping me to cast the float but also to control the bait especially when I'm bulking it like that.
Well that's another small puppy chub and I think we're going to make that the last fish. Well there you go, what a cracking net of fish in this short evening session. I've had chub up to a pound, dace, small roach and bleak. Why don't you give stick folk fishing a try? Thanks for watching.